let's explore the different ways you can draw with BrickSCAD. I have here a floor plan which needs some rails by the wall. Before V20, the easiest way will have been probably to change your UCS and probably even your view plan, which then you will have to look for the right wall, then draw the rail, change UCS and view plan back to the wall UCS and view. But with the new enhancement of the dynamic UCS, those previous steps can be skipped. If you go to the status bar under the DUCS tab, you will notice an extra setting in V20, and it's called DUCS on other entities. Click here to activate it. Now, notice what happens when I select to draw a rectangle from the quad and hover the mouse over this line. The UCS temporarily changes, so now I can draw the rectangle aligned with the line. But before I pick my first point, I'm going to block the temporary UCS by clicking Shift to be able to freely place a rectangle anywhere in the model space. Also, see that I don't need to know both dimensions, knowing that diameter is enough. So I click tab and now the dimension highlighted in blue, in this case is the Y axis, and it can be changed to 40 millimeters. And there's my rail. This feature can also be applied with the insert insertion of blocks. For example, I need to add one more sofa here. I right click to access my quad and then under insert selection, I select the insert block. I select the block and then hover the mouse to the wall I want this block to align with. Then click Shift to lock the temporary UCS and I can place my block anywhere along this wall. In V20, the dynamic input and its grid have been enhanced. With the adaptive grid, snap and dynamic input active, I can draw the road in a few easy steps. I'm going to select polyline from the quad. Hover my crosshair through this line so I can temporarily change the UCS. I'm then going to click shift, then tap and key in two meter offset from the building. Then enter and I will go to the second point of my road. Thanks to the adaptive grid, you see that my units I just, when I zoom out, it goes from millimeters to centimeters and then to meters. I would do the same process for the center of the road, this time keying two and a half meters as offset. Then I pick the second point. These few steps substitute the familiar workflow of drawing extra lines to use as guidelines, offset, copy, and eventually trimming or extending lines. To have a better use of the space in this room, I'm going to move this chair using the manipulator tool. I can access the manipulator by selecting the block and holding the right click button of the mouse a bit longer than usual. Now that the manipulator appeared, I'm going first to mirror the block. Then I'm going to move the block closer to the corner and if I want to, I can also rotate the block. The manipulator tool can allow you to work faster by not having to key in commands such as mirror, move and rotate. When using BritScan, we can often interact with its data. I will show you an example by using the nearest distance feature. This feature allows you to quickly see how two entities relate to each other in distance and eventually edit them, if necessary. You can see that when I select these two entities, I get three different values along with colors. The red corresponds to the x-axis, the green to the y-axis, and white is the overall distance. If you're if you are 3D modeling, it will also display in blue for the z-axis. Here I will change the overall distance to 3.5 cm, so that the bed gets moved closer to the wall. This workflow replaces having to recall any distance, running the command move, selecting points, and eventually toggling between your snap options, or turning your ortho on and off. Just select two entities and key in the value. Layers. In V19, layers could be filtered based on specific properties. But now we can manage our layers even better with the new functionality called Group Filter. If you take a look at the Drawing Explorer menu on the Layers section, you had previously the option of filtering layers according to specific properties. 
as an example. I'm going to filter layers by a specific color, such as one, two, six. Here below, you can see that it's now displaying only the layers with that specific color. I will give this filter a name, for example, green, and click OK. As a result, the filter is now available under your layers filter list. Now with V20, you also have the option to filter by group. Let's say you want to keep some layers together. You can do this by going here in the layer section from the Drawing Explorer window and select the layers you want. Then right click and then click on create group from selection. This group is now created and displayed under your layer filter list. You can change the name here. I'm just going to name it group one. You can also access these filters from the layer panel. You can see it here once it opens, then go to the top right and scroll down. Select a, select a filter and the list of current layers will change according to the chosen filter. Let's jump to the paper space. In V20, Vipro Maximize is available. You access it by either typing in the command line vpmax or by double right clicking the viewport as I will do now. One of the good things about this feature is that it allows you to easily access your model space without interacting between your layout tabs and model space tab. Also, it doesn't matter if your viewport was locked or not, it will stay the same just like your scale. Once you're done with any small changes, you can go back to the paper space by either double right click on the black panel to your sides or by doing it a right click on the toggle viewport mode tab located on the status bar.